until I receive feedback, I will not submit anything else. I want to know why they think whatever feedback that they can provide to me is going to change my search functionality. Does that make sense? Um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, earlier you asked if you're interested in the front end and the back end of the web if you're interested in both. Is there, is there an issue? I, I see a lot of people out there that do that. You know, they'll start off as web developers, then they'll branch off into like UI, or US development. Um, and so it happens. And you know, it's it's good to have that knowledge, but I mean you come into a standpoint where a lot of companies are looking for that true professional that's focused within a certain area. Um, you know, so for myself, if I see something that's kind of moved from this to that, you know, it makes me really question well, what is it that you're more comfortable doing. You know, I understand that some people want to branch out knowledge is power. Sometimes too much knowledge kind of gives a recruiter a thought process of saying, okay, well, he's got a lot of experience, but he's not mastering anything specific. Right. You know, so, it, you know, how many people here have more than one resume? Okay, so more than four resumes. Okay, good. You want to make sure you have a lot of different resumes. To hear specific, to, if you're applying for positions, you want to make sure you have a resume that is focused specifically towards the position that you're targeting. Those positions are going to be different for every single company. Um, like I said, the software stack is different. Take a look at the job description. Say, you know, if you have, like right now, gosh, this has been a point of my side. I'm looking for a senior backend developer, Java, that's got exposure to Linux environments. Well, funny enough, the Washington Data Technology State, those guys are hard to find. And if you do find them, they're at some major companies like Amazon, and they're not willing to do Amazon, Google, and they're not willing to do it. They won't be. Not even for me. Not even for what? Not even for me. No. So I hire some kind of little saving card out in front of me. Right. <laughs> no. No, they, they, they don't. So it, it really makes the uh, search sometimes very difficult, you know, depending on technology. When do, uh, like, letters of reference uh, from, you know, employers or clients that Worked with, when did those come into the process? Are those really late in the process? Or? Uh, generally, right before an offer uh, is when most. So after an interview? After the interview process, if, if you're selected, then at that time, a recruiter should be asking you for your references. Um, the other thing is, too, um, LinkedIn is a great place for that. Because um, so then they can actually come in earlier oh, if they're know, on LinkedIn. Like I said, a lot of recruiters are utilizing LinkedIn. You know, and, and once they're able to find you there, Obviously, there's a slot that says recommendations. I mean, to get it from every person that you've reported to, not a peer. It's people, managers that you've reported to. Because a lot of recruiters, before they'll even reach out to you, you can take a look at those recommendations. They say, oh yeah, this person, you know, some people that have done recommendations for you. We're going to list out the specifics. Worked with this person on this project. This is how they contributed. They did a phenomenal job. Blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Those things are really important because it gives a recruiter direct visibility as to one, your work ethic, what you're capable of doing, um, even though maybe you may be lacking a specific skill set you know, and whatnot. So, does that help? Question. You said not a peer. What if you worked for, like, uh, you worked for a manager, but a project manager uh, on a recommendation from them? They're a colleague, but they're, they're not a direct report. Um, those are okay. The one thing that most recruiters are going to be a little leery of is that what was your, you know, was it a true working relationship or was it a level of friendship? Um, and so that's where recommendations can sometimes uh, be a little sticky. Uh, I prefer, in most companies, will prefer who to do the work. That's what they're saying. So if there's a clear working relationship with somebody and they see that in the recommendation, perhaps? Correct. Yeah. 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 Correct. That's well. Right. Um, you know, as far as any type of recommendations, too, just keep in mind when they are calling like a previous company to find out, you know, uh, there's certain things out there that should not be asked. Um, however, people are always finding ways to work around it. You know, one of the key things is, okay, did this person work for you from this date to this date? And they're validating your work history. Um, most people 
are now supposed to ask, is this person rehirable? That's a very catchy question. Uh, because they could technically answer it, and then, but they technically should not. Uh, and the reason is, is because if I said, ah, no, he's not rehirable. Well, guess what? I just kind of almost prevented you from finding a job. Or consider it to be uh, a continuous Big key thing. Thanks for bringing that up. Portfolios for web development. Uh, you know, if you're creative, if you do an illustration or uh, website designs. Here's one of the things I can tell you about NCSoft. Has anybody seen NCSoft's website? Yeah. It's a little crazy. Um, it uh, It does. <laughs> that's why I'm. Um, that's why I'm looking. So. Um, There's a Don't lot do of that when you need a fun. <laughs> okay, that's a bad thing. That's all so fun. portfolio is a good. You know, there's there's a few websites that I go to, and you know, and, and these are websites where I'm looking specifically for the portfolio, and this ultimately has to do with visual design on a website. We've got two positions for that role right now. The thing is, is that when people are making websites, they're trying to make it all pretty. But a lot of things is, is that if you're going to do a portfolio, do something kind of out of the box. Yeah. And the reason is, is because how many people go to a website and it's like, OK, there's the tabs all the way across the top. You know, this is, it's standard. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like as an example, I'll use NCSoft. NCSoft not, doesn't think that way. They want you to come up with something creative, like circular icons. If you take a look at Car Byron's website, you'll see planets. And if you scroll over those planets, those are your tabs to take you to where you uh, I can't tell you how many people have done website design and it just all looks the same. Every single client that they may have, like freelance designers, they all look the same pattern. Mix it up. Be creative with it. Get out there and do something that's out of the ordinary. Come up with those ideas to do something with it. Because you know that's going to get you a lot more visibility. Um, I really enjoy that side, the, the, the creativity side, being able to come up with something that will just not and just right. kind of weave it in. But I also enjoy the other side that we were actually coding in, actually making the logic that work. And I can certainly, you know, I walked into one side where I'm just creating something and kicking it off to somebody else to try to implement it. The creativity side would be for your portfolio for future things. That's something that's going to be an ongoing basis. Um, as an example, when I worked with the, the director that was looking for these visual graphic designers in you know, the organization, the first thing that they told me was, we don't need money for Microsoft. Not that there's not plenty of qualified individuals, and the reason is is because they're looking for somebody that's going to be more creative. Right. You know, that's that's just that specific part. You can't say that it's the same for everybody else. But just try to be a little bit unique and different, and you get a lot more attention that way. Yes. Um, should you invest the time in um, on the web developer portfolio? Should you invest the time to put that up on a public server so your employers can look at it during the home? Absolutely. I mean, I can't tell you how many times somebody will say, hey, I'm interested in this web developer role, and they'll shoot me the link to the portfolio. And that's the first thing I look at. You know, It's like, wow, OK, well, I see this. This person's done this. Yeah, and then I may call them right on the top of that. If their contact information is on that portfolio, I'll call them and say, hey, thanks for sending this over. You know, let me talk to you. How did you do this? Explain this to me. Um, from a recruitment standpoint, I'm always curious about stuff like that. You know, if I'm not learning from you, then I'm not going to be a good recruiter for you. you know? And uh, I mean, some of the stuff I've seen is really out of this world. You know, it's like you know, you're out there still. Um, and uh, you know, for from a recruitment standpoint, by forwarding a portfolio saying, "Take a look at this guy. This is what they've done." Without even looking at the resume, that says a lot. That holds a lot of weight. I mean, at least 80, 90 percent in most cases. Because now they're not looking to see what's in black and white. They're looking at it and seeing, 
this is what this person's done, this is what they're capable of doing, and they're willing to move in that direction. So even if they didn't get paid to do those designs, they're just doing them to demonstrate what they can do. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right and in some cases, by listing what you you know what you've utilized to create that specific site, it's also important too. Because the then a recruiter can kind of take a look at it or even the manager and say, oh wow, they've got exposure to utilizing this, this, and this, and this. So yeah. Like on my resume that I, I use for focusing on finding developer jobs, um, I've got, uh, that's the first thing after my name is my list of websites that I've done. Right. Yeah. And is it, do, you, do you recommend that I put that, when I'm looking for that kind of job, put that as the primary call to action? Look at my web, look at my portfolio. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of times, you know, after your name, email address, and phone number, you know, and it, it is, you know, some people actually put like their LinkedIn profile. Because LinkedIn, this is how good LinkedIn is. If you ever go to my LinkedIn profile, I have a, I have a box. I have all the job descriptions in there. There's not very many recruiters out there that will that, that do that. Um, the other thing is too, by sending somebody to your LinkedIn profile. You can also store all of your portfolio, web links, and everything else there too. I mean, it's it's a really dynamic uh, system to be part of right now. Uh, but you know, I mean, I do that a lot. I mean, right now, I mean, most of my recruitment is not based as far as those black and white. You know, all of the rest, you know, like I said, I use LinkedIn. I get the resumes later after I see the just what this person has to offer. So, then, then if you make it past the phone interview, uh, should you bring a Printed flipbook of your website. Now, I would say keep it all on your computer. Bring your computer with you. They have a place where you can plug in and actually show them. Um, or just keep on the thumb drive or something. Exactly. That's that's usually the best way. Especially sometimes, you know, I've, I've got interviews that get scheduled for five hours. You're there for five hours. Not only are you meeting with the, the you know like 13 people, then you've got a presentation time period, which is usually 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how it's done. UX designers, or they've got to show how they can map everything together and everything else. I've sat in one of those and thought, oh wow, I would not do this. But you know, some people are good at stuff. Like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, what are you seeing with regard to uh, some of the new technologies, uh, HTML5, CSS3, mobile app development? Are you seeing a lot of movement uh, in that? Oh, yeah. It's a lot of it going on out there right now. Uh, when you say a lot of it, a lot of companies are demanding that oh. skill set. Um, and it's becoming very, very competitive. There's not a whole lot of people that have that. Um, and so when you do find it, a lot of employers usually react to it extremely fast. Uh, How would you list that on, like what kinds of words would you be using on resume? Are you using UI designer, um, UX designer, or front end developer, or, or really the technologies, HTML5, CSS3, jQuery, so, so you're talking about acronyms and comparisons of acronyms? Yeah, words. yeah. In a Boolean search, when I do it, I'll say you know, UX or you know, user experience. You know, and so I'll have those in quotations just so that it gives me one or the other. And it will identify that, you know, in anybody's profile and the LinkedIn or anybody's resume that I'm looking at, or resumes that do come up. Uh, some of my Boolean search terms are but that's why I save them because it took so long to create something that actually works uh, or pinpoint. Uh, as an example, I have a, a job, uh, I'm looking for a standard Java developer. You know, depending on whatever the software stack is, will give me X amount of uh, Boolean search strings that I have saved. And in most cases, I also keep track of the number of candidates that I'm able to pull from that search string. Or a very small pool, then I can target that specific. specific. Um, so, you know, as far as a lot of those, anybody that's you know, doing any recruiting are, are going to look for those things from a search string standpoint. I mean, we all start off with Boolean search strings and says, okay, well, we're looking for somebody that has everything. Well, we put all that stuff in there. And all of a sudden, we come with zero result. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to leave the HTML5, but I'm going to take out the CSS. Kind of results. I mean, that's how it works on, on our end. Is that if we can't find somebody that has 100 percent of everything, then we start working our way back from there. So if you have, you know, one of the things that really worries me about individuals' resumes is that when I take a good look, yes, I'm looking for.
for specific things that I'm looking for for a manager. However, the other thing is too is that I know for a fact that, that not everybody's resume is only one page or two pages. There's more experience to be explored. And you got it, that's why I say sometimes we're a good recruiter, you've got to have them, or a good recruiter will take the time to get you on the phone and speak to you a little bit further. I don't care if it's for 10 or 15 minutes. If, if somebody piqued my curiosity enough, I want to call and say, hey, I noticed that you have C, C++, do you have any exposure working with C Sharp? You know? Or some people have just done you know, development in C, C++, but if they've done stuff with Java, it, it, it could not, and it may not even be listed on the resume. So you've got to be able to have somebody that's going to go and inquire and find out who they're going to have it. Uh, most recruiters, like me, I don't like posting positions out there. The reason is because I get a whole bunch of people applying, and you know, if I have to go through hundreds of people, it really it takes a lot of my time to do that. So I traditionally invite people a lot. In some cases, that's why we're keeping good recruiters good. You know, as an example, Bolt's tied into every single company in the Pacific Northwest, and they know everybody's software stack. They know what kind of people they're always looking for. So, does that help out? Yeah, thanks. Yes. Um, first impressions are usually very good. First impression when you're trying to connect with an employee or recruiter is your resume. Any That's about 10% of the time. Yeah, just getting getting it seen, but also with that, that quick scan that you said, you know, less than a minute, it, it's gone, it doesn't catch you. Do you have a, uh, an idea of where we find really good examples of resumes that would be a, a format that would catch you if it, of course, was the right condition? You know, there's a lot of resume format programs out there. Yeah. Now, I traditionally say stay away from those. Uh, basically, what I, would, what I would suggest to anybody is that, you know, one, have an objective. I have basic summaries and this is where I'm coming from, this is what I've done. It's all in a very short five line summary about who I am. <coughs> and then we start going into specific skills um, as far as what, I, what I've done in the past. Um, I think that resumes that are done on the format where there seems like it would be a big order on the left hand side and everything's pushed over to the right and listed that way drives us crazy. Why? It just makes the resume that much longer. Spending money to have somebody fix your resume, you know, that can be kind of costly and it's not always effective either. Uh, I would say to probably take a look and have your general information, your summary, and practical skills and applications or anything that you've come to school for all in the very beginning, and then step into your positions. Um, or sometimes you may have an objective, like my objective is to get into the software and the development and to do this. As long as you have a good idea of what direction that you're going in, that can get bought off by anybody. If you, if you see something that's just kind of more of a general statement, you know, um, it, it kind of gives us that feeling, oh, this person just wants to be a you know? So, you know, so it's, it's always nice to make sure that within your resume that you're clearly stating what you've done or what you really want. Talk a little bit about how you organize LinkedIn so it isn't a chronological experience. Because I found that when you put your job experience in there, they require you to put the page of the work there. And when you do that, they list it right on the you know the first page. Right. And that's not what I'm I'm looking for being able to put past experience up there first. Okay, so you're looking to put past experience up first? In terms of the skills, the transferable skills yeah. that you have. My last job, experience. I was it was as a research scientist. Okay. I got it because of my background in science, but that's not what I'm looking to do right now. Right. I'm looking to do management of some kind, which I have done in prior jobs. My suggestion then on LinkedIn is not to specify all of the positions that you held. It's just build out your summary of okay. those capacity. With the dates. And exactly. Well, yeah but not going back too far right. in regards to dates. But uh, there's a few people that I've seen that, that have done that, where, say for instance, what direction are you moving into? What's what? You, are you looking to go into more management then? Product management, project management, that kind of. Okay, how's your background with product management? You know, I come from a, a retail background. Okay. And so, the transferring those skills into 
terminology that translate into project management or products. That's what I'm struggling with. Have you done marketing? Mm-hmm. Brand management? Uh, yeah, basically. I yeah. would give them marketing the marketing products that we sold, marketing the store. And how many years experience would you say that you have doing that? A lot. A lot? More than seven or eight. Okay, then you should give me your own. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I saw one of them already. The product managers right now. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's funny because you, you're going to look at the job description. Here's the thing, you know, as an example, like this product manager job. Basically what it is is that we have a new game, or anybody that's familiar with lineage, we have two games. Lineage, there's a product manager position that's actually kind of, uh, um, kind of taking the product and trying to do a little bit of branding and marketing to gain more visibility for it. The other product manager that I have, or product manager role that I have, is specific to a game that's not yet released. It's not gonna be released for another year to year and a half. So that person has really got their work cut out for them because they gotta take it from pretty much inception to delivery. Does that make sense? So, I mean, if you, if, there's only a few qualifications that I can think of off the top of my head. You have prior project management, account management, and branding, marketing. So if you have any of those things, in addition to your responsible individual, you love playing video games, that's all the qualifications I need. I mean, funny enough, I mean, uh, I'm actually dressed up. <laughs> Usually I'm just, uh, you know, in a t-shirt, jeans, you know, tennis shoes. I mean, in our, in our environment, it's I remember going in for my interview and I was wearing khaki slacks, button down shirt and a tie. First thing my director looked at me and he said, you know, number one thing I gotta tell you, if I hire you, you can never come in here dressed like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, that interview lasted five minutes and I realized I was, I was like, okay. He walked out the door and we seemed to know I was working with him. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, you know, to kind of go back, you know, in, in regards to, you know, what you're, what you're looking at, to speak to LinkedIn, Know, and everything else. By me asking you these questions, that's got my wheels turning. Okay, well, here's a potential person that you know could be a fit. For me, I would have to sit down and have a conversation. I don't, I don't do the traditional interview. The reason is I want to know everything that I can know about my candidates for any role, whether I'm referring them to somebody else, whether it's something that I have. I want to get to know who you are because I think that's the most important component. So for me, if you want to. Get my number. I'll talk to you later. Take a look and see what your qualifications are, and see what we can do. And see because then that's when my mind starts to turn to think. Okay, well, how can I present this individual for this role, and what's going to be the cap- what's going to capture the manager's eye, and what's going to make the most amount of sense. There's managers that I send somebody over, and they don't even look at the resume. I'll just give them in because they know that they're not going to get anything that's not tangible or not viable for that. Um, as far as uh, like demand for these frameworks, uh, do you see much demand for these frameworks? Uh, Joomla, Drupal, or WordPress? For a person who has a skill set to build a website using those frameworks. Drupal, we use that. Uh, not so much of WordPress. I don't see that too often out there. Um, Joomla is starting to get a little bit more popular. Um, I think it's just different with every organization. I mean, you know, when I go work for somebody, you know, the first thing I ask is, what's your software stack? So like, hey, what are you guys working with? Mm-hmm. There's stuff that managers give me that I haven't even heard of. In fact, by the time I do my Wikipedia and Google searches, I'm realizing, well, heck, this is all over Europe. It's not even here in the U.S. Um, there's a, there's a, I mean, there's two programs that come to mind. Um, one of them happens to be something called ClickView. ClickView? Uh, click view. That's Q L I K V I E W. All right. After doing the research, up there, NCSoft was asking me for that. I was like, well, I've never heard of that. You know. Started doing my research. Well, guess what? You can find tons of people in Europe. You know. You try to find anybody that has an experience here in the U.S. The only people that's associated with that is going to be account managers. They're not report developers or anything else. You know. It hasn't really. So the company bought technology that's not readily abundant here in the US. So you gotta kinda keep that in mind. So sometimes you gotta take a look and see what 
Asia's doing, what Europe's doing, to kind of keep up with the pace. You know. So ClickView, what it does is actually consolidates a big old reporting program. Uh, we use CodeNotes. Uh, it basically pulls all the data and just puts it up in a real fancy way of displaying it. Okay. That's what it is. Like um, an infographic kind of thing. Correct. So, but I mean, it was just odd. I'm like, really? Well, I don't think you guys want an account manager. Yeah. So. Yes, sir. So what about the marketing in general? Have you seen an uptick in uh, performance? Uh, there is. Um, yeah, the sad thing is, is that uh, if you're doing searches for positions out there, two uh, key things. If you're doing Google searches looking for a specific job, you're going to pull all kinds of stuff like from Indeed. Indeed's uh, just, it's kind of like the most, I would describe more of a spider web effect. It pulls everything else from all the other sites and goes through them. Um, and unfortunately, we're connected to that as well from a talent acquisition standpoint. It doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's qualified, but you know, I mean, we do utilize that. Um, you know, I, go that. Um, I was asking about the market and okay. its employment. Are more employers looking for more help? There's, a, there's, a, there's kind of a boom right now. And one way I was going with that is that a lot of recruiters won't post positions right now. So there's positions that are out there that you guys don't have visibility to. That's why I say connect with a lot of recruiters. Um, as an example, if you go to my LinkedIn profile or even our website and you see all those positions, well, those are general positions. It doesn't necessarily mean, as an example, I have a you know position in uh, Mountain View, California, and they're looking for Senior gameplay engineer, fancy title, gameplay, what does that mean? Uh, basically, what they're looking for is something that's really strong with CC. You know, this could be some back end development you know, and stuff like that. Um, now, there's six positions there. I've only got one posting. So, I mean, because you see one, that means a specific company or one position of it. Some, there's some companies that may say software engineers, very, very general, broad term. Well, what kind of software engineers are we talking about? Are we talking about this? Are we talking about that? Well, anybody and everybody that, that applies for that role then goes into various different buckets. Okay, these are Java software developers. These are C, C++ software developers. And they go into buckets until the need comes up and then they go back to the buckets and try to treat individuals that have the skill set. Um, that doesn't get you a job. Your visibility or get you in with some companies from a database perspective, but doesn't really get you in from a manager. But if you make sure to put your uh, your contact oh, yeah. information on the board, yep, absolutely. absolutely. So, oh, we'll go back there. Sorry. Um, you said you're correct for in a boom right now, usually my experience is reciprocal. Um, would you recommend uh, affiliation or membership in any professional organizations, such as AITP or things like that? Uh, those are good. If you want to meet other counterparts that may be able to help you get visibility into the companies that they're at or whatever it may be, networking is a big, big key thing. Uh, and that's exactly where the recruiting industry is going. It's full on networking. 
I'm always at the east side networking event. Anybody hear that? Or Seattle leaked or something? It's not leaked in, but it's called east side networking event. And generally there's like anywhere from three to 400 people there. Wow. It's usually at the Rock Bottom Brewery. Well, you have a nice car. Yeah. So, um, you know, those places are great um, simply because all of the major players in the area, managers, recruiters, HR managers, talent acquisition, they're all there. So it's an informal environment where you're sucking down a beer or whatever, talking yeah, to everybody. You walk in, grab a beer, you basically walk around with a name tag and just go around and introduce yourself. Uh, I have two people that have actually made uh, transition. They were both in sales. They wanted to do, funny enough, something in recruiting. It was something of interest. I took them to a networking event. I would say that both of them were employed within a week later. They ran into people there that were looking for, you know, giving people an opportunity, you know, to try something new, somebody that they could train, somebody that was handled, you know, and I was there with them doing some introductions. Uh, but I would highly suggest going to, to those things because you'll meet people that you would never want to find on LinkedIn too. If you never would run into them, you'll meet a lot of important people, you know, from I mean there's a lot of directors, VPs that are, you know, like Microsoft being the giant that it is, um, that are that are certainly connected. So that, that organization or that, that event, is that, uh, does it have a LinkedIn group associated with it? It does. And just look up the East Side Networking event okay. for, for Bellevue. Yeah. And uh, just join in and they send out those invites every single month. They come. They have a Seattle networking event too. So there's a bunch of other smaller ones, but yeah, East Side works out really good. So we do have pizza here. Speaking of networking. Uh, this might be a good transition to our uh, networking event uh, following the speaker series. You can uh, chat with Al, uh, give him your resume, <laughs> or get him uh, get connected with him on LinkedIn. Um, we'll have pizza and soda out here in the uh, just outside the, the door here. So please feel free to hang around. And, and, uh, I'll stick around too if you have individual questions. Ben Gilgore is still coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him to stop talking to Alicia.